Dave Stegel here from Going to 11, and today I want to talk about hearing dynamics. There are a lot of resources out there on setting up compressors and using compressors and dialing them in, but what a lot of these resources miss sometimes is how to hear the underlying issues in the first place, because when you're starting out as an engineer, your ears probably aren't going to be attuned to what can sometimes come across as subtleties at first when it comes to issues that might make you choose to use a compressor in the first place. So today we're talking about dynamics and basically dynamics, it's just a fancy word for talking about the difference between soft stuff and loud stuff or loud stuff and quiet stuff. If something has a lot of dynamics or is said to be very dynamic, that means it's swinging between the loud stuff and the quiet stuff. If we say something has no dynamics, that means it's very consistent in loudness. So, for example, a pure sine wave has no dynamics because there's no change in level for the sound. Um, but one of the things you've probably noticed if you've ever listened to a sine wave is they're very hard to listen to for long periods of time. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind at all times when you are messing around with dynamics. Because if we take too much of the natural dynamic out of something, it can become fatiguing and difficult to listen to. But at the same time, if we leave too much dynamics in, it can make a performance feel um, unsteady, not so confident. When we start applying compression and controlling dynamics, it can make that performance seem more solid and more confident and more professional. I have a bass DI track here, and let's just give this a listen. I put a little EQ on it, but other than that, this is it. So here's the bass. All right, so bass line. I'm going to play it again, and one of the things I want you to listen to this time through is I want you to listen to the volume from note to note on the parts. So you might be noticing that some of these notes kind of jump out at you a little bit, and some of them feel a little softer. Uh, let me play one particular part in here. So as he comes down, and he's landing on this note right here. Let me zoom in on that. Right here, watch the cursor. This is a note that, to me, feels like it's not as strong as it really should be compared to some of the ways he's playing earlier. So I'll go back a little bit. This is resolving right here when he hits this note, but if you listen to it right in front, it feels like he's losing some gas compared to that, those two notes right before. Sometimes though, again, like I said, this can be difficult to hear. So what I'm gonna do is show you a trick in learning how to hear some of the stuff. Um, one thing you can do is you can turn things down really, really quiet, really close to the edge of your hearing. It's kind of hard to do on a video, though, because I don't know how loud you're playing this back. Hopefully you're listening on headphones or some decent monitors because we're dealing with bass, and you're going to want to hear that low-frequency content. But since I can't tell how low you're going to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake a noise floor. And before we do this, let's, let's hide this waveform. And I have just a loop here of some stuff to listen to. Here's, here's what we're going to loop. All right. So listen to this walk up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a noise floor with some pink noise. And what you're going to notice is some notes are going to pop out louder than the pink noise, and some are going to kind of get lost in it. So here comes the pink noise. So 
So there's a little walk up right here. And as he goes up and he lands on that last note, that last note's louder. Here, listen to it with the pink noise. Now, on the one hand, you might go, ah, it's not that big a deal. But in the context of a full mix, some of those notes might easily get lost. And, you know, one of the things people come up and ask me sometimes when I'm mixing shows is they want to know, how do I get a solid low end? And a solid low end really requires a solid performance. And what we have here is a performance that's pretty good, but we can make this a little more solid. So I'm going to turn on a compressor here. But first, let's let's turn that off. Let's listen to the pink noise one more time with just this loop going. And now listen to what happens when when I turn on the compressor. Here, just listen to that walk up. It's with the compressor, without it, with it. So with the compressor, that performance gets a lot more even. Here, you probably want to see what what that compressor is doing. Here it is in action. Now, if you watch the gain reduction, you can see that when it's going on those quieter notes, it's not doing as much gain reduction. But when it hits those louder notes where he's really digging in, we're getting more gain reduction. And the result is we get a much more consistent performance. But one of the tricky things with compression that makes this hard to really dial in is we're always watching these gain reduction meters. And a gain reduction meter doesn't really give us a lot of information when we're trying to level something out. It doesn't really show us if we're reaching our goal or not. It just shows us how much is that compressor working. So let's not look at the gain reduction meter. Let's look at a meter of the signal. So I have this Duro meter here. And I'm going to switch up compressors here, and I'm going to switch to another popular compressor for bass guitar, and which is an LA-2A, and this is the CLA-2A. So I have two different settings here. This is going to get a little bit louder, just a hair, but I have two settings here. B is no compression. We can see there's zero peak reduction, and A has the peak reduction going. So what I want you to watch is I have this set on the output. So we're not going to watch gain reduction. We're going to watch the output. And I want you also to watch on this Duro here. We'll make it really big. Let's see what happens without the compression. So if you watch this meter, you can see these peaks are all kind of landing in different places. And we can watch this around in here as it's kind of dropping a little bit. Now, watch what happens when I turn on the compressor. Notice how most of our peaks are all fairly consistent, right around 12 and 13. We're also getting more consistency in this area from just the loudness metering of it. Here, I'll go back a minute. You can watch on the output meter here too, down on the uh, the CLA two A. 
Some of these are popping up around neck 12. Let's go back to the compressed. So you notice now most of the hits when he's landing on a note, they're all landing right up here around that neck 12. That's because now we're controlling it with compression. Now to just illustrate this a little bit here, let's go back to the waveform. What I did was I rendered what's going on with those compressors. So we can look at the waveform. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Let's do that. Now let's zoom those waveforms in. So you can see without the compression, just listen. Notice in this walk up, this note is gonna be a little softer, this one gets a little louder, and then this one's the loudest. Now let's look at, down here is the CLA-2A. I'm gonna flip this back so that it's reducing the peaks. So now you can follow along on this waveform. So you can see on the waveform and hopefully you can start to hear how much more consistent all of these notes are. If we go back to the CLA 76, I'll Turn that one back on. Now follow along on this waveform. Now there's another side to using compression that maybe you started to notice, and that relates to the sustain of the instrument. So if we bypass this CLA-76 again, and you follow on this waveform. All right, just up through there. Just listen to this note. Now let's turn on the compressor. This is what we're going to get. So listen, you can kind of, you can hear it fading out towards the end of the note. When we start compressing things though, we're gonna start bringing up that tail and keeping that sustain a little longer. Now on some instruments, this is a nice thing. Like on a bass guitar, this will help give the low end that kind of solid foundation. On some instruments, you may not want this though. This can actually end up sounding kind of choked and lifeless on some instruments. But on a bass guitar, I don't mind it so much. So there you go. I hope that helps you wrap your head a little bit around dynamics and how you can start employing compressors to control things. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can visit my website at www.going211.com where I've got all kinds of different articles on my journey in audio. And I also do training. So if you want to learn how to take your audio game to the next level, just contact me through my website. Thanks.